Numerical Computation, Chapter 5, Additional Video, Number 4. You can view this video after you completed Additional Video Number 3 in this chapter. So far, we have learned several methods to solve nonlinear equations, such as Newton's method and Secant's method. And we remark that the convergence of these methods is not always guaranteed. We know Newton's method converges if the initial guess is a good one. And the same applies to secant method. So for these methods to be successful, it is crucial to find an initial guess that is sufficiently close to the root. However, very unfortunate also, in practice, it is hard to find a good initial guess that would lead to the convergence of the iterations. So in this video here, we introduce the idea of a continuation method. Let's say we are given a function fx and another one gx. Here the zeros r for fx is hard to solve, while for the function g, the zero is none. Let's say g of mu is zero. We now construct a new function, call it phi, and it's a function of x, and it has a parameter that we can adjust, we call it s. So the function is s times f plus 1 minus s times g. And here s is a parameter ranging from 0 to 1. We observe that if s is 0, and then the function phi is just g because the term f is gone. And if s is 1, and then the g term is gone and the function is just f. As s ranges from 0 to 1, the zeros of this function phi will drift from mu, when s is 0, to r, when s is 1, in a continuous way. Thus, one may take small steps starting from the root for g and continuously getting closer to the root for f. To be specific, we choose n to be number of steps and let delta s to be 1 over n and define sk to be k times delta s for k from 1 to n n. Then we choose r0 to be mu. After that, we go through an iteration for k from 1, 2 to n. And for each k, we solve phi of x, sk equals 0 by Newton iterations. And we use the root rk minus 1 as the initial guess. So by continuation, rk minus 1 should be very close to rk, so this would be an excellent choice for initial guess. And Newton iteration should converge in a very few steps. So this will be true if delta s is sufficiently small, and if one shall observe that it is not converging, then you can restart and choose a larger n, so delta s becomes smaller. And then the final root Rn would be the root for the function fx. Okay, so it seemed like a rather simple idea and yet very robust and guarantees that one would find a root. That's all. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. See you next time.